uh yeah number one be anti-fragile um this is a really strange um occurrence has happened over the last few weeks but um if you're familiar with vox there's a guy on vox called carlos maza uh who does these kind of opinion piece kind of video content pieces that he puts out usually uh based around social issues that are going on whether it's abortion uh whether it's political correctness whether it's freedom of speech just kind of you know timely sort of stuff that people are talking about on outraged social media land and he kind of occupies the left you know extremely far left kind of positions on most things and you know, um, he kind of comes. Uh, he kind of butts heads sometimes with the common held beliefs with on the right hand side. You know, just the general kind of culture war that's going on at the moment. Um, for the most part, I tend to kind of ignore his content. Um, it's not for me. It's a little bit too uh, lefty for me in my regard. Um, it can sometimes be a bit annoying. You know, people speaking about political issues, social issues all the time. Anyway, it kind of it's a bit nauseating. Once you've heard one person speak about it on the right or the left, anyway, you've kind of heard all the arguments in general. So I don't really mind it too much. But I tend to follow Carlos Maza and I tend to follow um, Stephen Crowder just because I like to see the opposing views, right? Because they both occupy, you know, the far edges of either side, right? Um, Stephen Crowder very much on the right, and uh, Carlos Maza really much on the left, right? So it's good to kind of get an idea of it. And I know a lot of people do that because I think some people get triggered really easily, but I don't get triggered for the most part. I don't tend to engage in political conversation or argument online or on Twitter or anywhere in general. I tend to leave that stuff uh, um, for offline or I tend to leave that stuff for my own private conversation with family and friends. And even then, I just don't inspire my political opinion. I don't really think I'm in a position to educate or inform anyone in that regard. I think people can do that themselves. But I like to follow it on social media. I think it's cool. I think it's really healthy for the mind to see what these opposing parties or these opposing party um, cheerleaders are saying, how they're framing it, how they view each other, and how they go about trying to con trying to convince heart, trying to win over hearts and minds, right? Some of them do it in a very haphazard way. Some of them pull on them. Usually the left usually tries to pull on the emotional heartstrings and usually the right tries to go via the analytical stats-based side of things, right? Uh, taking heed from the famous Ben Shapiro saying, uh, facts don't care about your feelings, right? So everyone's got a different way of doing things. But this has been a very odd occurrence that's happened lately, right? Um, Stephen Crowder has usually has not a lot of good things to say about this Carlos Maza guy, right? Um, he's usually always going, uh, he's usually kind of always kind of poking fun at him, calling him names, you know, just generally being a bit mean. And I think if you have, if you've listened to any pers any of the kind of political pundits on the right, you'll know that that's kind of what they do, right? From Candace Owens to Car Charles Kirk or whatever his name is, to Ben Shapiro, to a few other them, to even people like Nick DiPolo, right? They're not the most softly spoken uh kind-hearted uh people when it comes to winning hearts and minds in a political argument i think of offline talking to them personally i'm pretty sure people will get along well with them i'm pretty sure their friends say they're really nice and you know they're very personable people but when it comes to that political sparring they don't really they don't cut any corners they don't they don't uh soften things up they say it as it as it is and they kind of you know they go for the jugular so if you're on the left it's probably hard to kind of you know speak to these kind of people because the language they use just kind of upsets you right it kind of looks sounds like bullying now from the outside looking in i would say Stephen Crowder's probably crossed the line a couple of times and things he said about carlos Mazza, right he's kind of called him some names and insinuated some things that are probably a little bit too they're probably he's probably only saying that because he knows Carlos Mazza is no threat, right? And this is kind of saying, you know, in a very uh, kind way. I think men, the way that we deal with conflict is the, the idea, the, the kind of the under uh, the overhanging um, notion that there's a threat in the air because you know uh, we can only exchange words for so long and then it kind of turns into violence. That's where you know that's that's a story as old as time. Men have that kind of you know think of their heads i don't think women have that sort of thing which is probably what leads to more cattiness and backbiting and and backstabbing in within uh uh women's uh, social groups in the general but you know guys can usually deal with and end that kind of talk quite quickly quite swiftly with forms of violence so i think the fact that Steve Kyle doesn't respect him as a man, Carlos Meza, and probably doesn't feel threatened by him leads him to kind of take some liberties and say some really wild stuff right which is, you know, again, mean, but not something that you should be able, you should re relegate, regulate, right? It's not nice. It's something that you'd prefer them not to say. But I think if you've seen Candace Owens go in full, full out, you know, quick speak, uh, 100 miles an hour panel discussion, uh, war face, she hasn't cut any corners too, right? She goes for a juggernaut because I guess on that kind of platform and that kind of uh, 
place you have to kind of go for it you can't really talk you can't really do that whole like you know dragging your speech pants shit that startup people do or the silicon valley people do um can't start talking about society you gotta just kind of go with it right so i get it but Carl Mazza recently has had enough and he kind of went out on, on his way to kind of tweet uh youtube and say that he thinks uh steven Carter's videos should be taken offline his channel should be cancelled because he's um violating their terms of content terms of the uh, terms of use right um because he's being mean and again i think it's it goes to it, it's a clear indication if ever there was one of the dangers of snowflakes right the danger of being um uh of being fragile right of not being anti-fragile to borrow the term from nasim taleb and um i don't know man how where this goes from now on so he tweeted just now Carlos Mazza, because i think he originally tweeted that he was he added, added youtube saying that you know with it being Pride, pride pride month and corporations all around the world you know espousing lgbtq values that they're somehow um doing a disservice to their lgbtq collaborators or creators by not silencing or banning voices that are out to harm them in some way shape or form which is really crazy to see right someone says something not nasty about your line they shouldn't be banned forever that's that's ridiculous right but that's his point of view. That's where he comes from. And now he tweeted up a following update because I think YouTube kind of investigated the issue and basically deemed that cut, you know, Steve Kleiner isn't abusing it, isn't kind of breaking any of their laws, isn't kind of coming into violation of their terms of use. And even though Chuck Carlson went out there to say that he's kind of, you know, has been doxing, not doxing, has been flagging their videos consistently uh, to try and get them removed, that hasn't kind of worked in his favor. So he's kind of made a bit of an update tweet, which again speaks to the fragility of his overall position, fragility of his overall mental space and how he kind of conducts himself. I don't know, it's just a bit very, very, very weird way to go about things. I, I don't know if this is the right way to kind of um, get over, if it's not the right way to kind of enact revenge or I don't know how this works because if you're, if you're kind of showing this level of vulnerability to someone on the right, they're only just going to keep going and twisting even further, right? It shows that you're really, really hurt. And it's really getting to you. Even though he doesn't act Steven Crowder, he acts like he doesn't know who he is. Um, he always watches these videos. He's always flagging them. And it's just, yeah, it's a bit weird. But anyway, here's his tweet. He says the following. Um, I don't know what to say. At YouTube has decided not to punish uh, Crowder after he spent about two years harassing me for being gay and Latino, which is, you know, a bit of a reduction of the overall sentiment but you know he does refer to himself as a gay latino on his own video so to say that i don't know how you can suddenly get cause offense get offended with somebody calling you something that you call yourself again but who knows maybe there's more to it than i know and the following teaser is the following there's a thread it's a thread uh to be crystal clear youtube has decided target racist and homophobic harassment does not violate its policies against hate speech or harassment that's an absolute batshit policy that gives bigots free license mm. again i think he's kind of uh what do you call it uh pushing the boundaries of bigotry and racism when it comes to Stephen Crowder like I said I just think Stephen Crowder doesn't like him he doesn't like Stephen Crowder they both occupy different positions on the political spectrum it is what it is unfortunately we live in a world now where people just can't coexist even though when they have polar opposite opinions which is very strange I guess there you have to blame the, the social media platform somewhat I think the moment Facebook instagram twitter stepped in and started uh regulating what isn't what is allowed and what isn't allowed then stop being a utility like the phone lines right if you call somebody on the phone and you say some crazy shit the phone line doesn't shut you down right it's the police jobs to do that um so i guess the fact that they stepped in and started re regulating what people can and can't say they couldn't they had to pick a side and unfortunately they picked the left so for someone like stephen crowder if he does get deleted or if your channel does get demonetized he can he could he has what he has more than enough merit to come out there and say that you know social media platforms are leaning heavily left right they favor the left overall because you know most political pundits even the comedy ones are mostly left aren't they right there's not a lot of them there's not a lot of republican uh talk show hosts really for the most part right or they are if they are they're doing it in secret so it's a bit strange i think that this is a thing that people are now weaponizing in order to take down other people that have opposing opinions but you know i guess that's the nature of social media um the tweet storm continues um if you're an lgbtq if lgbt creator at youtube is using you they are trotting you out to convince advertisers that their platform hasn't become a breeding ground for hate speech and bigotry uh they're hoping you'll distract this advertisers away from the monsters they're creating 
<laughs> this guy's so fragile, man. Imagine being this worried or this preoccupied or this afraid of someone like Steven Crowder. He's just saying nonsense about you online, trying to make it into a comedy sketch. Sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't, right? Um, poking fun at your positions and, and challenging your ideas. And instead of debating him on those ideas or because rebu- uh, he, he does quite a lot of rebuttals, right? Steven Crowder of videos that um, Carlos Maz does on, on Vox. So instead of having a rebuttal that is kind of, you know, tinged with, laced with some kind of comedy too, you could take a lot of things you could take the piss out of Stephen Crowder for. Loads of things. He just starts crying on social media and at YouTube and, t- and trying to get his followers to flag Stephen Crowder videos so they get taken down. It's like, come on, man. That's not, that's not cool, dude. Come on. And I'm sure Carlos Maz is a funny dude. I'm sure he's got some quips that he could, again, maybe he doesn't want to play in the mud, but this is this is social media space that we're in now at the moment where this is kind of a, it's kind of a bit of a free-for-all. You have to play... And I think he probably would get a lot more respect from both sides of the of the fence if he was able to kind of dismantle Stephen Crowder's arguments with a bit of comedy, right? Like, that would be pretty cool to see, I reckon. Um, it continues, and if you're an LGBTQ employee um, working at YouTube, what the fuck are you doing? Um, helping a guy sell socialism is for fags t-shirt, which is not, it's for figs. It's an inside joke that they do, but again, he doesn't want to listen to that. That company isn't your friend. It's arming the monsters that we're spent our lives trying to get away from. Walk out of there. What? He wasn't able to quit their jobs because of Stephen Crowder's videos are being allowed on there. What's he going to do for them? What's Carlos Manzano going to do for these employees that walk out of their jobs uh, work, uh, working at YouTube? Highly paid jobs, right? Highly lucrative jobs. Come on, man. Um, I have spent two years getting targeted by racist, homophobic abuse of, of one of YouTube's star creators. Star creators are probably a bit of a stretch, right? He's only got 3 million subs. There's a lot more people out there who have bigger platforms than him. Today, YouTube decided, and he's a, and he's a far right, um, com, com, not far right, well, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a conservative, uh, what do you call it? Talking head or comedian or personal, you know, or pundit, whatever it may be called. There's, there's not many of them on YouTube compared to the people on the left, to be honest, too. So to say he's a, a star is a bit, you know, far flung. Today, YouTube decided that none of these, these violated terms of service. Um, I'm sure a lot of these Stephen Crowder videos get demonetized, too. So, again, it's weird to say that. Um, if you're a prominent YouTube LGBT creator on, on YouTube, you have, an inc- you have an incredible opportunity to raise hell for a company that's been exploiting you for a while now. It's fucking Pride Month. Use your power. Other queer creators are coming to you. So when you keep saying LGBT, is that in the community? Can you, why can't you just say queer? Doesn't queer encompass all of that? Lesbian, gay, bi, trans? Wouldn't they just cre- encompass everyone under that umbrella? Because LGBT is just annoying, isn't it? Just say queer, right? I don't know. Maybe it's not me. At YouTube, uh, finds all the bullies LGBTQ LGBT people try to escape from in high school and gives them the weapons and platforms they need to keep formatting, torment, tormenting us in the adulthood. It's a platform for monsters. Which is again, this is interesting. He says that stuff about high school, right? This kind of goes back to my um, no idea that a lot of people hate Brendan Shaw because he reminds them of a high school bully, right? Um, the issue with the high school thing is that I think if you were in high school and you were persecuted, tormented, bullied because of your sexual orientation, right, or because of your opinion, or because of your political views, and you had no way to protect yourself or arm yourself because at that time as well, the, you know, you, at that, when, the, when you were that age, you probably didn't have a Ben Shapiro online dismantling arguments left, right, and center uh, during live debate shows and stuff like that with these quick quips that you could then copy and say to and kind of repeat ad nauseum in your own schools. You didn't have maybe access to books or in the internet. I don't know. There were things in your way, right? That prevented you from being armed enough to kind of defend yourself, even physically, even just like through martial arts and shit, right? But the older you become, I think the the, the lack, I think the older you get in life, the less likely you are to engage in some kind of physical altercation, right? You're more likely to kind of argue ideas out, shout each other down, um, hold, uh, scroll up and hold, um, scream and holler at people, right? So I think what happens when you're older is that really and truly those bullies shouldn't have the, the same kind of influence or shouldn't make you as worried as they did in school because they can't really hurt you unless they live right next to you, right? Which they probably don't. I'm not sure where Stephen Crowder or Carlos Mazza live, but I'm assuming they don't live that close to each other, right? So you can essentially say as much as you want without ever crossing paths. They both occupy different places within a political spectrum, so they don't, they're not going to share a platform for the most part. These people don't really come out in real life. Steve Okada does sometimes. He does that um, debate me thing at university, which is quite popular, or that Change My Mind series and stuff that he does. So there's there's unlikely they're going to cross paths. So the idea that, you know, this is reminding him of high school bullies is a bit, again, fragile thinking because you're on the internet. You're protected to some point, to some way, shape, or form. If you don't like what you're saying, just close down, just close your computer. 
um, t- log, out, log out of social media. And all of a sudden, Steve Ricardo doesn't exist, right? Um, that's one way to deal with it. And again, because you're an adult now, you should be able to argue, debate these points of views or your positions quite clearly in a on a public forum. Because imagine if he did, he accepted a debate or was able to do uh, a rebuttal video every time Stephen even every time he did the video to record the rebuttal he did his rebuttal right and through those rebuttals Stephen Carter's arguments kept getting dismantled right it would it would um, eradicate the value or the potencies of his little jabs that he does in these videos that's what he'll do in general over time people would start uh, calling out Crowder for being a bully if he kept going on and on about him being a queer or him being a lispy queer or him being down him being this or latino it would it would ebb, it would kind of chip away of his insults and it would essentially paint crowder out to be the bully and the bad guy but when mazadis does this it just makes him seem like the, a whiny baby right who can't take somebody not agreeing with what he's saying and being mean it's like yes yeah, Stephen crowder's mean yes he's saying things are out of order but is it enough to get him removed from youtube like really huh. um anyway it continues on and on here um da, 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 da. it's he's, oh, he's going for ages there. i can't remember let me just finish most of it um it's quite there's a funny bit at the bottom as well i want to get to it's going to get so much worse now youtube has publicly stated that racist and homophobic abuse doesn't violate their anti-gay anti-bullying policies crowder and his allies are going to be em- emboldened um, I generally can't imagine what LGBTQ employees at YouTube are doing right now. It's a strange argument, though, and it? it's going on as if like the entirety of media has been over overrun by right wing um, conservative figures, and it hasn't. It's the complete opposite. If anything, there's there is the lack of balance is what's really hurting the political discourse in most places, right? In the UK, even with Brexit, right? The moment you dis, the moment you enunciate any opinion, the, the, the moment you enunciate opinion that kind of verges along the lines of like you know maybe brexit isn't a bad idea you get immediately grouped into being some kind of fascist or something right there is no balance there is no nuanced opinion it's all kind of one way or the other in or out um which is strange and then he so for someone like him to kind of suddenly start crying foul and start talking about the media being overrun by far right conservative figures is a bit crazy and it's not really in touch with reality for the most part but i don't know maybe i'm wrong um where we've got well, and I, I don't know the constant poking at YouTube employees that they should leave their jobs. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna hire them at Vox or something? Um, we've all gotten so fucking used to how toxic and shit YouTube is. We still just accept that this is the way things are now, but it does have to be. It's toxic because YouTube let it get this way. Let biggest and all right creeps shock jocks take over. It's on them. Hmm. Uh, the important thing is YouTube isn't going to listen to cries for help. They don't give a shit about the harm they're doing to queer and marginalized people. You have to raise hell. Use their platform against them. Hold them accountable for the neglect. Raise hell. What does that mean? The beautiful thing about early YouTube was watching queer, marginalized people learn how to use their voices to value the power of their testimony. <laughs> These statements are just so empty, isn't it? These woke statements. What does that even mean? What does that even mean? To use their voices to value the power of their testimony. It's like, what? The power of testimony. What happened to, the, what happened to evidence and facts and, and numbers and analysis and what? It's just okay, cool, man. Uh, and for the fu- and for fuck's sake, stop agreeing to participate in YouTube's pride and public relations packages. The company's exploiting you for for while arming your abusers. Don't let them use you in the court in the corporate branding bullshit. Okay, fine. He's, he voices opinion. That's where he stands in the in the fight. No problem. The funny thing is, is Colin Moriarty, right? Who's somebody who's I would assume left of center, right? Liberal kind of dude says the following tweet after he's done this whole t- tweet storm. I watched one of Crowder's videos about your work and I'll certainly take and I'll certainly taken aback by some of his language. But maybe you should just compete on the market of with the rest of us and let your ideas do the talking. That would certainly be the most convincing way for you to win, quote unquote, right? Uh seems like uh maybe says the following is yeah, right? This is this is what he tweeted, right? Uh and then he here's the following. Where do where, where do, where do Steve, where do you where do you post it? Oh, please let me see if I can seems like he tried to manipulate the market. It's upset. Didn't get... Yeah, and he says the following, and then someone tweeted him. Uh, he is competing and creating a, and creating the market, but now he's being targeted and harassed based on his ideas. And Colin Moriarty replies, seems like he tried to manipulate the market and is upset that it didn't go his way, which is very true. I sympathize with him because he was take, I was taken aback by some of Crowder's verb, uh, verbiage, particularly in his repetition, in his repetition more than uh, one-off jokes. But it's great to have the wide open boundaries for speech, right? 
and I think there's a there's a because there's, there's a clip of him basically getting blocked, which is really really funny. <laughs> uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. But yeah, it's an interesting debate. Um, I don't know how people can operate like this. I think in life in general, being this kind of fragile and not kind of you know having any kind of backbone. Not I won't say backbone, but not having any kind of stump uh, st- stiffness or toughness to you is a bit strange. But again, maybe I'm weird in this matter. Where where can I where can I see this? He kind of t- he tweeted that basically he got blocked by Carlos Mazza. I think maybe he might have de- deleted it. Maybe. Uh, where is it? Did he delete it? Maybe he deleted it. Yeah, he might have deleted it. Yeah, I think here it is. Right. So, so I think here it is. Where is it? So there. So I think after he tweeted that, quite a reasonable response, right? Telling him maybe you should try to compete with his ideas. Carlos Mazza, because he's a fragile human being, decides to block him because he doesn't agree with his opinion. Like, such a strange way to go about things, right? Um, and then, yeah, it says, okie dokie, then, <laughs> blocked. <laughs> oh, I fucking love, so predictable. But yeah, that situation at the moment, again, it's something that you probably don't need to worry yourself about. It's very, it's a very uh, marginal uh, conversation or beef on, on social media land. Unless you follow these people, you don't really know what's happening. But it's an interesting place to be, right? People on the left crying and people on the right are having too much influence on things or are being allowed to say what they want. And then people on the left, right crying that the left is taking over and there's no uh, right leaning voices. No one can win. And the idea of winning too is so bizarre in this political conversation that like winning. Okay. And it's about personal, it's not about ideas or policies being pushed forward for the betterment of society. It's about their own personal opinion winning at the behest of somebody else. It's like, okay then, mate. But again, what do I know?